Congressman, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, sir. This is your first interview since President Trump's response to the white supremacists, uh, uh, the protests, the car attack in Charlottesville, Virginia last week. Uh, what did you make uh, of how the president handled the situation? Well, I think it's been, you know, well stated and probably overstated at this point that a lot of people were disappointed in his response, that there wasn't immediate condemnation of, of, of some of the groups that were, I think, way, way, way out of bounds. And any kind of equivalency, I think, was, uh, again, equally out of bounds. What would you have wanted the president to say immediately? And all of us recall what happened in Charleston, uh, in, in, in your home state, uh, when there was a white supremacist who went on a rampage. Well, uh, what the governor at that time did and what I think a whole host of local leaders did was to immediately condemn what had happened unequivocally, pure and simple, say there, there, there is no justification, there can no be writing of this ship. What happened was tragic and wrong, period, end of story. And I think if the president had done that in Charlottesville, uh, he would have been applauded for that. There was a, initially a lag and then there was a, sort of, well, there were bad uh, folks on both sides. Uh, that isn't the time nor the place to go into those kind of subtleties. I think it was, again, a time to be unequivocal in simply condemning what had happened and condemning racism in any form or fashion. The president said there were very fine people on both sides. That's, that's the statement that really irritated, uh, angered so many people out there, because on the one side there were white supremacists, KKK, neo-Nazis. On the other side there were protesters who opposed those white supremacists. When you heard those words, very fine people on both sides, Congressman, what was your reaction? Well, as I just stated, uh, that yeah, a bit of shock and a bit of disappointment. Uh, you know, I, I attended business school in Charlottesville, Virginia. I have two boys, one who's there currently and one who graduated just a couple years ago from Charlottesville. I put out a Facebook comment, said this is not the Charlottesville I know and we need to overcome evil with good, which I think was the beauty of what happened in the tragedy that occurred here in Charleston, South Carolina uh, in the wake of the tragic shooting at the, the, the local church uh, on Calhoun Street. What would, you, what would you like to see the president uh, say, if anything, about this tonight? Well, I think he has, you know, backed up and, and made, as uh, the vice president has stated, a number of different points of, of condemnation. The problem is it was late. And the problem it was, again, there was that equivalency component that I think troubled a lot of folks. Uh, if he wants to, again, uh, come out with further condemnation, uh, I think it'd be a good thing. I, I don't know that this is where it's going to fit in, given I suspect much of the conversation, in fact, will be about border wall and what happens next on immigration. A lot of people are wondering why the president has decided to hold this campaign rally tonight, this huge campaign rally in Phoenix, so quickly after what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia. Here's the question, Congressman. Does this send the right message about trying to bring the country together? You know, I, 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 you can parse these things to, I, I mean, uh, fairly crazy levels. And so, I, 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 no. In other words, my first reaction would be no, give it a little bit more of a pause. But in fairness, you know, there's been a longstanding promise that he made with regard to immigration policy and particularly securing the border. I think that a, a lot of Republicans, a lot of conservatives would like to see a more secure border. There was funding built into the minibus or the appropriations bill that was passed in the Congress that would have another 73 miles worth of border wall protection in it. And so, you know, at some point we've got to get onto that conversation. I, you know, the timing might be a little bit off from my end, but in fairness, there is an important transition in moving forward on a number of issues that I think are going to be very, very important this fall, whether that's on the debt and the deficit, whether that's on what comes next and how we fund government prior to the end of the fiscal year, which is September 30th, or indeed what happens next on the border. But is it appropriate or three and a half years before the next presidential election for the president to be out on the campaign trail attending these kinds of huge camp re-election campaign rallies as he's about to do tonight? A lot of people are wondering why. 
I, I'm, I, the one place I'm not going to try and get is inside Donald Trump's head. And, and so, uh, in fairness, he's going to do what he's going to do. Uh, you know, as a legislator, I got to simply react to what comes next from a legislative standpoint, and it's going to be an awfully busy season uh, come you know a couple week, uh, a couple days from now as we go back into session. Right after Labor Day, you guys got a lot of work to do in September, including raising the nation's debt ceiling uh, to make sure the nation's full faith and credit is not undermined. The New York Times has just reported, Congressman, that the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Uh, was privately horrified by the president's handling of Charlottesville and that the relationship has disintegrated so far that the two haven't spoken in weeks. How damaging is this to the Trump presidency? I don't know. I mean, well, if you're asking me to go off on, uh, you know, a private horror, private speculation, private comment, I mean, I don't know what was said. I don't know what wasn't said. I, I, I don't want to get inside, you know, again, Donald Trump's mind. I don't want to get inside Mitch McConnell's mind. Uh, you know, until they are public about what each is saying about the other, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'll wait and see and see how that plays out. I, I, again, I, I, it's conjecture at this point to say what McConnell's really thinking, uh, given this uh, report that came from The New York Times. But, but, Congressman, if the relationship between the Republican president of the United States and the Republican leader in the Senate, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, uh, has so deteriorated that they're not even speaking to each other right now and that Mitch McConnell has privately, according to the New York Times, expressed uncertainty that the president will be able to salvage his administration. How extraordinary. You've been around for a while, so have I. This is pretty extraordinary, isn't it? It is. Uh, so to, to, to that point, which is a different point, I would say it's a real problem uh, because, uh, again, I've been in executive capacity. Your, your hands at the end of the day are going to be driven by what the legislature does or does not do. And you better find a way to work with them because at the end of the day they can, again, uh, uh, stymie your efforts or they can a actually move them forward. And so it's a real problem from the standpoint of him advancing his legislative agenda, what's, uh, again, allegedly going on between uh, uh, the, the president and, and, and Mitch McConnell. It's a, it's a real problem for so many Republicans, especially in the Senate. They're going to have to pick. Do they stand with the Majority Leader Mitch McConnell? Do they stand with the president, these two men, apparently not even talking to each other? I, I guess the bottom line question, and I have to take a quick break, but you can give me a quick answer, uh, Congressman. Are you proud of where the Republican Party is right now? Am I proud of it? Um, uh, may, uh, Wolf, you got a lot of strange questions tonight. What I'd say is um, I, I think that it is an awfully um, tense time in politics right now. On the one hand, you have a lot of the Trump supporters out there who legitimately are frustrated with their belief that nothing is getting done in Washington that improves their lives. On the other hand, you have people who are saying, wait a minute, some of the institutions that made this country great uh, are being challenged in the process, and you're going to have a real tug of war over the weeks, months, and even years ahead between those two points. Congressman, I want you to stand by. There's more we need to discuss. We're following what's going on right now in the streets of Phoenix, Arizona. The president getting ready to arrive there shortly. We'll have much more right after this. Andre. And Congressman Mark Sanford. Uh, Congressman, as President Trump prepares to hold this uh, huge campaign rally in Phoenix, Arizona later tonight, triggering lots of protests, uh, the president and uh, the House Speaker, Paul Ryan, they want to push tax reform. What are the chances of that moving through the House uh, and, and getting passed anytime soon? I think they're better than people realize because given what didn't happen on the health care front, if you talk to folks within the Republican base, they're absolutely desperate for some kind of win moving forward. And I think the tax reform would represent just that win. And it doesn't carry with it the emotional weight that you know, frankly, the health care debate did. Uh, it's a different conversation. You know, let's talk about your cousin, nephew, or child with cancer versus what's on your W-2. So I think it's a debate that will move forward. It's got to move forward from a political standpoint and I believe from a policy standpoint in terms of making this country more competitive. There's another immediate issue that uh, is going to be on your agenda 
before the end of September. The Congress has to uh, vote in favor of raising the nation's debt ceiling. Otherwise, there could be financial disaster, the full faith and credit of the U.S. coming into play. Will you support passing legislation to simply raise a clean bill to raise the nation's debt ceiling without attaching anything to it? I won't. Uh, you know, we got to look at the fundamentals of how we ended up with a $20 trillion national debt. Oddly enough, $5 trillion of the national debt, in essence, is attributable to the wars in the Middle East over the last 16 years. That's a different conversation. But we've got to look at what are those fundamentals that are driving us to a higher and higher debt level, and we got to do something to put the brakes on it. And so the idea of clean without a a addressing the core issue of how you're building up that debt to me doesn't make sense and I don't think it makes sense to a number of conservatives as well. Will the conservative Freedom Caucus, as it's called, uh, in the House of Representatives go along with ra raising the nation's debt ceiling? I can't speak for the group, but my suspicion, based on the members that I know, would say no. They would want something for that vote. What do they want? Something that, again, would go something that addresses the core issue of how do you slow down spending in Washington so that we don't end up with, frankly, a much bigger financial crisis as a result of not slowing down what is clearly an unsustainable path so what, in debt so, so, Congressman, what do you want in order to get a yay vote from you? Well, I, again, I, I think that there will be a whole host of different pol policy alternatives that come to us. Um, you know, some people would say, you know, what I want is a balanced budget uh, amendment. Uh, other people would say, I want two-year budgeting. I mean, there are going to be a number of different proposals that are all built around this larger theme of how do you slow up spending so that we're on a sustainable path. But, but Congressman, are you willing to risk a stock market crash uh, uh, that, that potentially could go along, a recession, if uh, the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, the Treasury, is questioned? Well, f f again, people can draw a lot of scary pictures. Uh, and again, Treasury Secretary's job, it seems, it, with a Republican or Democratic president, it's, its job there is, is to do so. Every president seems to want a clean debt ceiling, whether a Republican or Democrat. And it, again, it's historically been conservative who said, wait a minute. We have got to stop and, again, put the brakes on what's happening here. So I, I think that if we do nothing and we simply add debt ceiling increase upon debt ceiling increase upon debt ceiling increase, the one guarantee that we are headed toward is a financial crisis and a financial cra crash that would impact a whole lot more than the stock market. So I, I, I think that the scarier picture is doing nothing to slowing spending and seeing, the, the, frankly, the financial crisis that will come as a consequence. But you know, Congressman, there's not much time. You only have until the end of September. That's, that's the deadline. Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, he guarantees that uh, this legislation will pass raising the nation's debt ceiling. You sound much more concerned. I am. And, and let's make no mistake, there is a big difference between a country's uh, technical default, if you want to call it that, in saying, uh, we're in the process of reordering the way we spend money so that we can stay on a sustainable path so we can pay back your bond versus the inability to pay back, which is where you end up here in the not too distant future. If you look at you know the charts of where Greece was at the time of their crisis or a whole host of other countries, America is headed for that point if we do nothing. And so we're going to have a real tug of war in the month of September about where we go next on spending and how we pay for this additional debt increase. Congressman Mark Sanford, always good to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, sir. Pleasure. Just ahead, uh, we'll have more on the lead up to the president's campaign rally. How far will he go to fire up his base and potentially rally?